What's up, YouTube? It's been a couple of weeks since my last video, and I'm happy to report that I am 100% recovered. And with that, a lot of things have changed in the United States and in the world. It seems like a lot of things have been happening over the last two weeks. So with the, the price dump recently, I picked up some silver. I know I said I wouldn't, but the prices got low enough to where it made sense. Plus, I wanted to support a small business. And uh, some of you might have seen it, uh, Jaeger's poured, poured Silver. Uh, I picked up uh, 11 ounces from there. Basically, I just grabbed a grab bag of what was left, and uh, uh, they hooked me up with uh, what you're about to see. I also picked up uh, this uh, IWB holster for my Glock 19 because I like to be prepared. And if you've watched this channel, you would have known that... I was ahead of the curve by at least a week or two and had a bit of lead time before everyone else. And several people who thought this virus was a joke or, you know, overblown or I thought I was fear-mongering is starting to see the relevancy within your city because it is still spreading pretty quickly. And the likelihood of people going back to work by in April is very slim and looking like May at the earliest if that and if it extends beyond that then there might be some trouble in uh, society and I like to be prepared for that so what you're seeing here is a grab bag of uh, three two ounce Jaegerport silver bars these are nice little bars uh, just the standard issue nothing too special uh, I generally like bullion so it works the average price I paid was in the mid 16s which is decent uh, but I did buy some other things at a significantly higher markup to do some donations with. So all's fair, it's going for a good cause in both directions to support small business and to support hospitals in the Bay Area because the number of cases here are significant. Lately I've been doing a bunch of donating. Uh, I donated some N95 masks to some hospitals, uh, some sanitary wipes, some hand sanitizer, donated some blood. Uh, all these things that uh, everyone can do. There's no reason for us lay people to have N95s uh, in times of crisis right now. Uh, I think for the general population, the surgical mask is enough as long as we're sheltering in place. And that donating uh, at least a th portion of your N95 mask, if you have it, to your local hospital, enough to buy them time to get N95s produced and manufactured for them. So in this batch, there was uh, five ounces, a two ounce shield, a two ounce cube, and a 2020 bar. I, I do like the 2020 bar. I think of all the things, I'll, I'll end up keeping that one for sure. The other ones, mm, uh, they, they might go as gifts or if, uh, depending on silver, because the thing with silver and gold right now, I do think that there is going to be a price spike now that the dip has been priced. Uh, basically, uh, after gold took a pretty big dip last week down to 1440 and silver down to 1112 I did enter in on some buys I didn't buy physical because everyone knows that it's very hard to purchase and the premiums are very high so I ended up buying the ETF of GLD and SLV which track spot pretty well if anything I'm considering selling some of my bullion silver though the ones that were in my previous videos in order to raise funds so that I can buy additional ETFs. Because right now the premiums are high enough uh, and the spread between physical and spot is big enough to where I can get an additional like 20-30%. And the, the big thing here is that it's only a supply crunch because of the current time. Once we're over this hump and things come back to normal, then supply will start to get back into production, businesses will start producing and manufacturing and demand will increase supply will be short hopefully at that time spot will spike and then at that point then I can cash out the ETF once I do that then once supply starts to catch up to manufacturing then spot price should move its way back down so this is a midterm a short term and a long term play so the short term is to liquidate the physical purchase the ETF once we recover uh, as a nation, then to liquidate the ETF and then repurchase the physical. Because 
it all works in a cycle, right? We've seen it in 2011, we've seen it in 2000. Uh, each one of these points where metals spike, it only spikes because of uncertainty. And then once we get back into certainty, then the price comes back down. So this is one of those opportunities where you're able to shift out of the uh, GSR ratio and then move back in, move back out uh, in these, these times. I'm also taking this time to uh, play with options and I've been studying them and making some purchases because I still think we're moving in the wrong direction because a lot of you out there still think this is fake and not a legit thing. And because of that, this drags out longer and longer until everyone is on the same page and we all do the same things all at the same time. Or at least until we roll through everyone in the entire population until you know we get to the end, right? Because it comes in waves and we either take it all in one big wave or we spread it out, flatten the curve. I'm sure you've heard of it by now. And either way, uh, if you do or you don't, there is money to be made in markets like this because you can make money on the way down and you can make it money on the way up. It's just that it is a bit risky. Fortunately, I sold out right before uh, everything happened and the market went down and tanked. So I have some capital that I would have lost anyway that I'm putting back in to uh, try my luck, so to speak. But all my decisions are fairly calculated. I still think we're going down. I'm putting money on the way down. I bought some puts on the SPY and I've also uh, bought some uh, longs. I put, placed some limit buys on some companies that I like once if they go down to a certain point where I feel like I'm comfortable purchasing them. It doesn't take a lot of money to make a lot of money with options but it also doesn't take a lot to lose a lot as well. So it's a very uh, volatile market right now which is which is one way to learn very quickly because you can make money or lose money very quickly so I'm taking my chances because I am studying the market I do understand what I'm getting myself into and I understand the risks because this goes back to when I was in my crypto days and I'm taking the lessons that I've learned from that uh, and applying it to this market because if those of you who have been in crypto understand that this the, the volatility is has just transferred from crypto to the stock market. And a lot of us who have been through crypto know the emotional roller coaster and are desensitized to it at this point. We just play the game that uh, is in front of us. And for us right now, the government has added another six trillion dollars in liquidity, which it's going to be interesting because that's pretty much just all funny money, right? Uh, who gets access to that? That's all going to be injected into the market. And the market, that's not really going to solve the problem with the virus. So what I anticipate is money is going to be pumped in by the government and people will take cash out because, you know, there's nothing to look forward to in the near future. And it's good to have some cash on hand because cash is king right now. And because the government won't inject that all at once, there's going to be a push and pull. And what I'm trying to do is to get in on that push and pull and try to come out on top, at least better than 50%, right? Hopefully 50, 60% to 70% accuracy or positive rate is what I'm looking for and I'd be happy. So that said, I think some of you should be upset that we're adding five to six trillion dollars to the deficit because I know some of you were pretty pissed off at just one trillion and now we've ballooned it for a total of maybe seven to eight trillion uh, after the first two trillion that were added and then this next six trillion so that's a lot of trillions that uh, the government is pumping in but again it's all necessary but some of you who said who thought that uh, we would be financially conservative we're completely wrong. And to be honest, in my opinion, it would have been a lot less of an issue if we paid attention to it like some of the other Asian countries have in the, the other side of the world because they immediately jumped on it and took control of the issue. And only the countries that did not take it seriously are the ones with the most problems right now. I have friends who are nurses, doctors, and in law enforcement and everyone is seeing an uptick in issues, in crimes, in visits to the hospital, in just 
there's there's just a lot of instability in society right now and i'm sure in your neighborhood this is it's likely starting to pick up you're noticing it as well and it might not be crime in your neighborhood just yet but in mine it's starting to uh, get a little bit more crazy which is why i made the purchase that i did with the holster because when you live in urban areas you got to be a little bit more careful as of now, it's only been break-ins and, uh, you know, smash car windows, attempted robberies, uh, some burglaries, that sort of thing. But there has also been an uptick in harassment as well. As uh, some of you may know, I'm Asian. I have some friends who have been harassed and their friends have been harassed. And that's just not cool because, uh, you know, a lot of people are blaming a certain ethnic group and can't tell the difference between ethnic groups because we all look the same apparently and the longer this goes I'm already seeing it and I'm sure some of you might have noticed it go ahead and leave a comment below if you've been in this shelter in place for over two weeks going on three weeks once you get on to two months or a month and a half three months and people aren't working the resentment is only going to grow more so this is in my opinion what I'm anticipating and trying to mentally prepare for it, and mentally prepare others as well, especially the females, uh, because they're the ones who get the most harassment. And it's understandable to an extent, because people don't know how to handle the stress, and they need to take it out on someone, and it's easy to point to someone that is an, a figure or representation of why we are in the place that we are. Uh, because the, re the reality is when you get cooped up at home for long, prolonged periods of time, um, people, it starts to wear on people. Like I'm noticing people getting more anxious and bored and just like, when is this going to end, right? So right now we just had an extension and it's going to continue extending. Like what you're seeing here is the line to get into Costco. And basically it was a 40 minute line to get in. And they only let so many people in at a time. So all the supplies are there. I think all the initial hoarding is done, which is why I was donating goods. I think over time, we'll eventually catch up in the supply chain. But it's just a matter of time, right? And people have to be patient. And patience gets real thin when you're running out of cash or you, you need to work to support your family. I'm very fortunate and blessed in the fact that uh, the company that I was working for was acquired by a, another company with a strong balance sheet. Because what we saw last week was a lot of blue collar positions get wiped out. Restaurants, uh, hospitality, airlines, all those jobs were laid off the previous week. But coming up, we're going to see white collar jobs, office jobs. We, there are tons of layoffs coming. And it's this week, the unemployment report isn't going to be any better. It, it might be slightly lower, but it'll still be in the millions. So I still see a world of hurt coming up for the next few months, which is, again, why I wanted to look at options. I don't know how long this stimulus is going to last because we've already had three stimulus packages approved so far. The first one, $8.3 billion. The second one, 750 million or 750 billion. The one after that, 1.5 billion. And then again now with uh, the 6 trillion. And I believe they have another one in the works that they're already discussing for after that. Because if Americans can't work for two months, and we don't know when this is going to end, right? Because the, the way we approach this is so different, it's uncharted the way we're trying to uh, basically play whack-a-mole with uh, these, uh, these cases that constantly pop up. And for me, I feel like I have a unique perspective because what I do in my day job is basically capacity planning for uh, internet companies. And we absorb their traffic, and my job is to make sure that they don't overwhelm us and that we can manage their traffic and we scale up or scale down as necessary. So it's very interesting to me 
that seeing the problems that we have and how we're trying to address it. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I don't think we're doing enough to throttle the influx to the hospitals that need to be done uh, because it just seems like they're going to be overwhelmed and both society and uh, politically we're not taking the steps necessary on all sides right in, in asia they're culturally aware because they've already been through it with sars and are already have protocols for this sort of thing i'm going to share a link in the description below with a good interview with the top epidemiologist and virologist in South Korea. He is very specific at, at, about this being science-based, science and there is absolutely no politics associated with it at all. It's straight talk, direct from the virologist, in exactly how they address the issue to keep the con issue under control in South Korea, to manage it, and why their society, it has not broken out like it has in other locations. It's a very good watch. I highly recommend it because this is something that you won't see in America. It seems that America, it's overly dramatic on both sides, on all sides. And in this case, you would just hear it straight and you know it works. You can look at the statistics for South Korea. They were right at the forefront and they've managed to control it. Yes, they're smaller, but their cities are more dense and they were still able to control it. There are several questions that were asked that are highly relevant where I was looking for answers for these types of questions, but they weren't really in all in order. Plus, you have all the theatrics and the drama. It, we don't really need that. What we need is to be prepared with the right information. And this video has a lot of that, such as can you get reinfected and how it transmits and also what age group breakdown is there. Because there's a lot of talk about age group breakdown, but nobody really discusses the details about it. And, you know, they're in, in here, they're actually broken down into percentages and it's good. It's all data based, right? He has a sheet of paper and he reads off of it. So, again, if you just want straight information, none of the bullshit this is the way to go, uh, or like this is a quality interview. And he also goes over what they've learned and hopes that uh, we can adjust our strategy and improve upon theirs uh, because, you know, it's in everyone's best interest for the next one. This is basically something that we have to live with because nature is nature. As we expand our presence everywhere, we basically are cutting things down and intruding on other uh, species, right, on other animals. So there's a lot of things that we still need to do because obviously we have an, what looks to be like at least another month or two because I think Trump said the turnaround's supposed to be not until June-ish. That's a long time. So there's a lot of things that can happen in between then because so far the last couple of months, man, has seemed like years already. Time goes by so slow. We're all trying to adapt to a new way of life for the time being, right? Before we can get back to normal. And a lot of people are still treating it like normal and just going to the park all natural. Uh, I was at the park when I was donating some stuff and basically everyone's at the park. No one's taking it seriously. And, you know, it's not liberal, liberal or Republican. It's just people being cooped up and wanting to go out and exposing other people and that's just the way it is so in my opinion you know you can't really change other people who don't want to change so there's no point in fighting it or being all upset about it you just got to deal with it so in the best way that we can and in my case if i'm going to be home cooped up i'm going to learn the market because it's a trader's game at this point because the swings are, are pretty dramatic anything can happen at this point and that's that's good. I mean, ultimately, it's not great, but I mean, it's good for making money in in the meantime, right? If you're going to do something, might as well do that. And then once this is all over, you just turn it around, make money, sell in the market. And then once we turn that corner, when we have like some sort of uh, medical breakthrough or we get some sort of medical treatment breakthrough where it becomes manageable, then 
that's when things will start to improve and we'll start turning the corner. But the way I see it, we will need a couple of things. We need to have the testing at full capacity for both finding out if someone has it and also finding out who has already had it, the, the antibody testing. And from there, once we find that out, then people can start going back to work once they've been identified uh, for people who are somewhat uh, immune to it at that point. Once we get all those pieces together, my intention is to start reinvesting anything that I've earned into the companies that are the most solid. So things that I'm looking at that have been pretty hard, just oil, uh, I think losing credit for losing Louis for pointing me at USO, uh, biotech, because I'm willing to bet we're going to invest a bit more into uh, the whole medical research R&D as a result of this whole, you know, scenario. And the, just the strongest companies that have held through who are weakened because these are the, the weakest are going to fall off and the strongest are going to survive and continue to move forward. So it's one of those things. They'll identify themselves and it's good to be in a position to uh, make moves on that. It's just I'm not the type to just kind of sit and wait for it to happen. So I'm trying to be an active participant in everything and again I might lose my shirt it it's okay I'm only allocating a certain budget for it I'm not risking everything so with that this is a longer video uh, if you like it please hit that like button I'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching and be safe be well and see you on the next one